Okay, so we can quickly extend this example to handle multiple points, right? We're not just restricted to one point. If I create another point here, so I'm just gonna copy this point in Rhino. Now I have two points. I'm gonna copy this point node down. I'm gonna set one point. I'm gonna reference my new point. So now I have two separate points in Grasshopper. I'm gonna copy this distance node and now plug in my second point into A. So now I have two sets of distances. And now I can just add those distances together to create um, the total distance from every circle to both of those points. So now both of those points will control my geometry. So I can just use the addition component. Just type in plus or addition. I'll plug both those in here. So what it's going to do is it's going to go through both lists and add up each number in a row. So first number to the first number, second number to the second number, and so forth. Generate 100 new numbers, which is the addition. And now we're just going to plug that number into both the sort to figure out our min max and to the value in remap to remap those numbers. So now our geometry is responding to both points. Okay, so it's just a way to make the relationship a little bit more complex so we can fine tune how our geometry is working. But you can see that still because we're using the remapping, there's still a lot of control between the smallest circle and the biggest one. Okay, and there's no reason we have to stop at two points, uh, but as you can imagine, constantly replicating this and doing more and more additions can get kind of tedious. So now I'm going to uh, do an example of three points, but use my data structures to my advantage to actually figure out those calculations uh, a lot easier. So what I'm going to do now is based basically first make a third point. So now I have three points in Rhino. I'm going to make a new point node in Grasshopper, but I'm actually going to set multiple points and select all three points. Let me hide these. So now you can see that all three points are referenced in Grasshopper. And what I'm going to do now is calculate the distance from all of these points to all three of these points. So again, I'm going to use the same distance node. I'm going to plug in these 100 points into A and these three points into B. And again, you can see that I'm only creating 100 because of that same kind of data structure issue, where because these are both in the same plane, on the same level, so it's taking the first one, the first one, second one, second one, third one, third one, and then for the rest of the hundreds, using the third point. So what we want to do is calculate all the distances for each point. So we will graft those 100 points, so they're all in their own um, branches. It's going to calculate for each point the distance to all three points. What we get now in our data is basically a branch for each of the 100 points and all the distances, all three distances to our reference points. Yeah, exactly. So if I go back here, I flatten this, and I graft my three points, I'm going to have three branches with 100 points each. This is the same as flip matrix. So at this point, what I actually want is the addition of these distances, right? Before I was adding them together. And here again, I can use the ma uh, massive mass addition component. And again, mass addition will add up all the values within each branch of the structure. And since we made our structure this way, where each distance is within a branch, it's going to give us now 100 branches with those three distances added up. Once we do that, we can just plug in that uh, added that total value. And again, first, because we, we want this, uh, we don't want this complexity of a hundred different branches. We can now flatten that, and it's going to give us a hundred distances, just like before. We had a hundred distances. And now we'll just plug that into our sort and into our value inputs, and we have the same exact thing. But now it's driven by all three are points. And from here, 
uh, the advantage of doing this way is it's um, completely scalable, so we can add any number of points and it will respond to all those points. Like I've been saying the whole time, trees and data structures is probably the most confusing part about uh, Grasshopper, but as you do more and more of these examples, you actually start to see how you can use the structures uh, to your advantage to get you the results you want. Okay, so now we have this set up. I'm going to do one final thing, which is um, instead of referencing points from uh, Rhino, I'm going to create parameters to drive those points so I can actually control the locations through numbers within Grasshopper. And that's so here I have these three points um, as references. Now I just want to build those points from scratch within uh, Grasshopper. So um, I'm going to use this construct construct point node in Grasshopper. Construct point is going to take uh, x, y, and z numbers and create a point at that location. Okay, so this is a way that we can uh, parameterize location of a point. Okay, so I need to specify x, y, z locations. I'm just going to make a slider for each one of those locations. Let me make a slider that goes from zero to ten. I'm going to make a slider for each one of those dimensions, x, y, and z. Okay, plug those in. So there's my new point, and you can see now that the location of that point is being controlled by those three sliders. You go up and down, left and right, front and back. Okay, and then I'm going to actually make uh, three of those points. So now I have nine inputs, basically, driving those points. And then now I can plug all of those points into my point component. So now I have actual numbers in Grasshopper driving ultimately the size of my circles. Okay, so that's the final um, definition. It's a really simple kind of example of relational geometry, but it shows you how you can use both built-in geometry in Rhino and also geometry making Grasshopper to control um, other sets of geometry in, in Grasshopper.